Well, while I did think that something like this might happen, I never thought that it actually would. The auto industry is changing its electric car plans because consumer response is changing. Giants in the auto industry have all dropped their two cents on the situation with electric vehicles, and it's not looking particularly good right now. To be honest, I knew that something was out of whack as this year, there seemed to be a somewhat larger focus on new cars powered by internal combustion engines, or at the very least, the convos about new ICE cars and new electric cars were balanced without favoring EVs too much. Now we know why. Interest in electric cars is waning and automakers' huge investments in architectures and development is being jeopardized. Or in layman's terms, automakers bet all their money on black for EVs being the only way of the future and now the ball landed on zero gamble responsibly my ass. What are the ins and outs of this predicament? Well, let's start with Honda. Not too long ago, Honda announced a partnership with General Motors worth $5 billion to develop a whole bunch of affordable electric cars with shared platforms and technology. That deal has now been dissolved and the brands are going their separate ways for affordable EVs. I should mention that the Prolog SUV is still happening, but I don't think the partnership will extend much further than that. Honda has other things to worry about right now, like actually achieving one entire sale in Europe. After extensive studies and analysis, we have come to a mutual decision to discontinue the program. Each company remains committed to affordability in the EV market, is what Honda and GM were quoted as saying. What about the others? Ford is reportedly losing $36,000 on every electric car it builds. General Motors has delayed its electric GMC Sierra and Chevy Silverado, as not enough people are interested. Even Volkswagen and Mercedes, infamous for charging into the EV transition like a five-year-old straight into a glass door, admit that EV demand is slowing down, and the pressure for this transition is brutal. Charge too fast into the glass door and you will get hurt. All of this goes back even further, as the UK recently pushed its internal combustion engine car ban from 2030 to 2035, and it, there is still the loophole in the EU law that opens the door to e-fuels if they prove to be effective and the backers prove that they can be produced at an industrial scale for a competitive price. Meanwhile, Toyota is having its I told you so moment. As I'm sure a lot of you know, Toyota has been notoriously slow to knock out more electric cars. This is because their entire lineup is available with hybrid power and Toyota happens to be of the belief that the transition should not only be gradual, but we also shouldn't disregard other ways to decarbonize transportation all over the world. Of course, while this turned out to be absolutely true, nobody was listening. Everyone told Toyota, shut up you doofus, go make more EVs, and then they realized that it won't be that easy. By the way, I am absolutely convinced that a lot of the hate surrounding the Toyota BZ4X is due to Toyota's slow EV adoption. As it turns Turns out Toyota was just being logical. To add further credence to all of this, the European Union slackened off the Euro 7 emissions regulations a little while ago. That's a good thing, as the original Euro 7 regulations they had outlined would have caused straight up chaos. But why is electric car interest going down? There are multiple answers, but the main one is that they're too freaking expensive. EVs still can't match a comparable ICE car in terms of price, and climbing interest rates mean that people are forced to tap into their life savings just so they can put on their best LA influencer impression and sit their asses in a Tesla Model Y. They're also expensive to manufacture, as highlighted by Ford's reported losses, and there are still issues with logistics and acquiring the necessary components to build electric cars. Volkswagen temporarily suspended manufacturing of the ID3 and ID4 because of the weakening demand. Please add physical AC controls to them while it's still suspended. Furthermore, the number of consumers who want a properly long range and who most certainly don't want a 60% reduction in range when they're towing a trailer is still very high. And let's not even talk about car enthusiasts that aren't interested in heavy, lumbering, silent electric cars. The less said about the pollution caused by the production of electric cars, the better. Yes, EV production currently causes pollution because of the lithium lithium mining, and other things. What does all of this mean? Well, I think that the auto industry is slowly beginning to realize that the transition to electric cars won't be as quick or as easy as they initially planned. Does this mean that the internal combustion engine will score an all-out victory after all? No, I don't think so, as they have already invested too much money to just let it all go to waste. The investors wouldn't be too fond of that. But, at the same time, do I think that a large part of the industry is now exploring multiple ways to decarbonize the fleet and the gas engine? Although some of them haven't said it yet, I'm gonna say yes. Brands like Toyota, Porsche, and Mazda are forerunners in the endless crusade to reduce emissions in other ways that don't just involve electric cars. And I think that other automakers will finally start exploring as well. Remember, the internal combustion engine does not pollute by itself, it's the fuel. Hydrogen, e-fuels, whatever they decide to do, just by opening up to a multifaceted approach, which is something Toyota is still very much doing, 
the future of cars doesn't seem so one-dimensional anymore. I also want to clarify that I do not think under any circumstances that electric cars should not exist. I have driven multiple electric cars and they do have their benefits. I've spoken about this before, all I'm saying is we shouldn't abandon what we already have, let's just make it better. Imagine outlawing propeller airplanes and forcing everyone to make jets, or as I said in the last video on this topic, banning feature phones and making everyone use smartphones even when they don't want to. With all that being said, we still don't know for sure what the internal combustion engine's future is. What I can tell you for sure is, it won't die out anytime soon. I still maintain that the internal combustion engine has a place in the future, and if more automakers show interest in making it work in a carbon neutral world, things are going to look very different 10 years from now. And that's going to be about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you liked it, be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think of this whole thing in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.